Oh no, thank goodness I woke up from that horrible nightmare. I was I dreamt that I was some weird, disgusting gremlin girl on the internet making YouTube videos, but nobody watched. Thank goodness that isn't my reality. And welcome back to Devlog. In the last part, I worked on... Barrel. And in this part, I'm working on the movement for the player's combat capabilities, the animations for these combat capabilities, and how these interact with breakable objects. So at its very basics, just to clear up what this system does, this game is a platformer, it doesn't have complicated combat capabilities, it's really just you having the ability to smash or break things in the scenery or in each level, so there's not going to be complicated enemy juggling or really combat combos or things like this, it's mostly just a movement option that also damages things. It's also easier to think of this system as a dash mechanic, because it pretty much does the same thing. An attack is also a dash, it's just your way of hitting things and dealing damage. Playing in-game, all you do is you press the attack button and your player makes an appropriate attack based on your movements. If you are standing still, you have a still attack where you just don't move anything. If you are pressing an input towards either direction, you will have a tilt attack. Or if you are running very quickly, you will have a spin attack. If you use your attack input in mid-air and then jump while using your attack input, you will do a long jump attack. This is you spinning in a circle. This one's my favourite one. And this attacks things as you spin and hit them, but if you hit onto a wall, you bump up it. And if you press down while in midair, you will do a slam attack. You've played Mario's, you know what a slam attack is. This has the player going down, slamming onto the ground, and then hitting everything in their way until they land on stable grounds. Let's talk about each attacks in their basics. The first attacks as your standing still attacks, your moving attacks, your spin attacks, and your aerial attacks. These all work in the same functionality, although they have some overrides if you're in the air or on the ground. If you're on the ground and using these, your character will be pushed forward a certain amount depending on the attack. So the spin attack, spin of the, so the spin attack will move your character, for example, 12 units forwards, while a tilt attack may move your character 1 unit forward, while a normal attack may not move your character at all. We will then take this amount, add it to our player's momentum and our player's speed, and then based on the attack that we're currently using, we'll also have a dampening amount. This is how much the character loses speed over time of this attack, and then we also have a length of each of these attacks, these are how long the attacks last for, all of these are put together in our subsystem state to make it so the character will then move through their current axis, either being on the ground that they are standing on or in the air, based on the speed that they've been added to a character, they will slow down as they continue their attack, and then once their timer has run out, they will exit out of their attack. Really easy, it's just adding force to the player and making it so the player cannot move while the force is being added to them and they are currently in this attack state. We next have our long jump attack. This is if you make an attack input, have not double jumped, or on the ground, and while you are using your attack input, you make a jump. This is our long jump attack. This is also a movement option, as it can move our character very quickly, horizontally. But this is, um, this is my favorite part of the devlog. I really like how this looks. Um, everything about this, moi, chef's kiss, real good just an amazing attack. It moves very well, it looks very cool, it has nice movement functionality, and it has nice interaction with the game space. This, despite being an attack function, is has its own separate logic behind it. This being that a certain amount of force is added to our player, we have very slight control over our movability. You can see if I jump towards the right and then hold the input to the left, we will move slightly slower, so you have some level of control while in the long jump state, and then this exit state will end once we land on the ground or hit a wall, but I'll talk about that in a moment. As we are using our long jump, we attack everything, either above us or below us, if our movement is going up or down, and then in front of us, based on whatever our facing direction is. The idea behind the long jump is that it's very easy to do a lot of damage to a lot of objects or things in the scene, so if you had a lot of enemies, or if you had a lot of objects you needed to break through very quickly, you could initiate a long jump, but the issue is that there is a risk to using a long jump, as if you collide with something in front of you that is not a breakable object, for example a wall, or an object you cannot break by hitting it, more on that later, we will then bounce off it. This triggers into the bump state, which I will talk about. Now, why not? The bump state is if we bump into an object, either in the air or on the ground, but currently it is only triggered by the long jump state. If we're doing a long jump and we hit something, for example this metal barrel that I hope is still in the scene, 
This cannot be broken by a regular punch or a regular attack, so we bump off it. This adds force upwards to our character, force backwards to our character, and then over a certain amount of time for how long we want our character to be bumped for, we will fall down to a regular falling animation. Or a unique bump falling animation. Basically the character bumps off something and then falls down, and you can regain your character's control when on the ground. This is the risk of the long jump functionality, that if you bump into something, you're kind of going to fall into a shadowy abyss if you miss your target. You really have to use the jump function, the long jump function, with intelligence, being that you can easily perform it wrongly and die or miss what you are aiming for or landing to the ground. It's an intelligence movement option for only an intellectual. Essentially this is just my 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 favorite sort of game design technique of Here's an option the player can use, but you have to weigh up the pros and cons of using it in this certain circumstance. Do you want to use the long jump and have increased speed, more damage outputs, breaking things easier, but unpredictability? The slam functionality is another one of my favorites. I really like how this looks. The player, if you are using an attack input while holding down in midair, they will carry their forward momentum slightly and then stop. So you can still carry forward a little bit after using a slam input if you're going very quickly. You'll be boosted into the air very slightly. You will then trigger into a falling animation of your character slamming down. And once you hit the ground, you will be set on the ground normally. You will have a slight recovery period and you'll play a slam effect, which hides the really awful animation of the character slamming on the ground. Um, it's it's just the character stretching out and then stretching to their normal positioning. It's why I made a very big effect for the character landing on the ground. Because the landing animation I couldn't think of anything interesting enough so I just made a big effect. Please don't look at it too hard. Not, not that you can, but... This is pretty much how all slam inputs work in games. You use it, everything below you that can be broken will be broken. Certain objects can only be broken with a slam. For example, maybe an enemy with a with a shield above their head, you could only break by slamming into it instead of just regularly jumping on it. It's for these sort of circumstances the way you would use a slam input. As using the inputs, you have no control of your character. I may add a functionality for cancelling a slam, but for now, I'm okay with keeping it as it is. And as you use a slam, you'll fall a lot faster. And that's really it. The complexity of the movements for each attack is very simple. It's just values that the character is then manipulated to move into. And the real functionality for each of these attacks is how the collision data works. The way we handle collision for destructible objects or enemies is very simple. We have an overlay for each of our attacks. So, attacking forward, we have an overlay in front of our character. Attacking upwards, we have upwards, downwards, downwards. Then, if each of these overlays interacts with a destructible object or destructible enemy, we will feed its information back to the player. Then, depending on the player's state, we will check if the object is destroyed. So, for example, some objects can only be destroyed by hitting them, some can only be destroyed by jumping on them, some can only be destroyed by slamming into them, and some can only be destroyed by explosions, which has yet to be added. So, for example, in this current scene, we have a barrel that is metal and a barrel that is wooden. The wooden barrel can be destroyed by slams and can be destroyed by punching it, which means all of our physical attacks using our attack button are going to destroy the subject and our slam attacks are going to destroy the subject. But it is not destroyed by jumping on the subject, so if we were to stand on the subject, it wouldn't destroy itself. While other objects may be that we can jump on top of them and they would get destroyed. The metal barrel, on the other hand, cannot be destroyed by any of these things and can only be destroyed by explosions. So this one is just a more durable object. This is just so the player has different varied objects in the scene, or maybe different enemies, mayhaps, that can be destroyed in different ways. This would obviously have to be something that is read by the player, so if the enemy has a shield in front of them, they can only be slammed on. If the enemy has a shield on top of them, they can only be hit. Things like this that you have to read in the current situation and judge how you can destroy or destroy enemies. Finally, we have attack animations. There is a lot of these, and two of them are incredibly specific in the way that they are designed, as you will probably have been seeing throughout the video. So, I will go over the basic ones in basic. The air attack is just you slashing in the air, and then recovering with putting your weapon away. It's basically the character swinging their weapon in midair, and then floating around and putting their weapon away. It's a very nice animation, I like how it looks a lot. It's very floaty, and it's very fun. Uh, I think this animation turned out very well. The ground variants for attacking normally and attacking 
from tilting, uh, just different variations of this. If we're attacking normally, we swing a pan, which is definitely what the character has on their back. We swing our pan from the forward to the backwards, and then put our pan away. An interesting quirk of these animations is the fact that the player cannot turn because they're a two-dimensional sprite, so I have to sort of manipulate the body parts to give the impression of swinging in an arc and having some turn to the momentum so I can twist the arms in specific ways or do other sort of tricks with the models to make it look like there's actual turning in this animation. Which I think doesn't look too bad. I think in this animation and the tilt animation, which I will show now, it sort of shows off this method of having the character try to turn without actually having the capabilities of being able to turn. But I think it really gives the impression that these are attacks that they have weight behind them and the characters really smashing objects with them. The more interesting attacks are the long jump attack and the spin attack. I'll go over the long jump attack because it's very simple. What I use in this instance is I use a special sprite on the sprite sheet for the character's smear frame. This is a common thing in animation when the character has a fast motion, they have a smeared frame of sort of multiple actions all smeared together to give the impression of fast movements. What I do is I draw this, so this is the character spinning in a circle, so I sort of draw something that we give the impression of the character spinning very quickly in a circle. I overlay this over the top of the actual two-dimensional sprite model, and then I have this rotating very quickly so it gives the impression of the character toonishly swirled together. I really like this method. Originally the character was just going to be doing a regular spin, but I thought it was a bit boring looking, so I drew the smear frame and was very happy with the results. I think it makes the actual animations look more cartoonish, more two-dimensional, definitely more stylized, and overall very fun looking. I use the same method for the character's spin attack. This attack is inspired by the Rayman spin attack, the Crash Bandicoot spin attack, the spin attack from Mario Galaxy. Basically any attack in any videos game where the character just spins in a circle. This is the character moving very quickly, so I had to get this impression of the character spinning very quickly too. Originally this was more two-dimensional of having the character spin around in their regular two-dimensional way, but it didn't look very good, so I had a smear frame drawn for this as well. And by had one drawn, I mean I drew a smear frame. This one has less motion behind it because the character is not moving in a spherical way, so I can just spin this motion. So what I do is as the character is spinning around, I will stretch and deform this smear frame to give the impression that this is also the character spinning around very quickly. I don't think the horizontal stretch is as good as the spinning smear frame, but I do think this has, say, similar cartoonish effect of the character's spinning. Overall, I think this is definitely a better visual than the character's regular attack animation. It makes them look a little more cartoonish, and I really like this method of animation with the character having just overlaid smear frames for a few frames as they move. I think even slowing the game down and going frame by frame, I can still really enjoy this animation, so I'm very proud of it. The first attack's collision data is none of these attacks, it's the regular jumping on things. As the player is in midair and falling downwards, we will check if there are any enemies or things that we can land on below us that can be bounced off. Certain objects can be destroyed in certain ways, for example these barrels will not break when jumping on them, but certain objects may. If we land on one of these animations, we will trigger into a specific jumping animation of the character. Doing a fun little flip, we will be boosted upwards, we will have some of our momentum kills, and we will carry on moving as normal. With the thing we landed on breaking. I think platformers are fun when you can jump off objects and break them. Bounce off the enemy's soft spot to kill them instantly. Really super easy. Is the player moving down and the thing is below the character we can break by jumping on it? Jump off it, break the thing below us. The end. And that is about it for this devlog. I'm really happy with how the attack movement works in Air. I think it works uh, very well for making the movement capabilities in-game more fluid and more fun to perform. It gives the character more inputs of what they can do in Air with more attack animations and just more capabilities for the character to perform actions. It makes movements more advanced feeling and just that there is more than the player can do in opposed to running and jumping. I also feel like the feedback of objects when you break them is fun, but that's probably just because the objects look so darn cool. Boy howdy, how did I draw these barrels? If only I made an entire video about drawing these barrels on my YouTube channel. If only. In the next part I'm going about wall movements and ledge mechanics, so you gotta subscribe if you want to see that video. It's gonna be pog.